helping businesses grow and you absolutely have to market to grow your business. Giving all you got. The best is yet to come. Welcome to, um, I'm Tiffany Ungren from OMH Agency and welcome to Chat and Grow Marketing Masterminds. We are here today with Emily Petroff. Thank you so much for coming. Can I, well, it's Petroff. Oh, Petroff. Yep, that's okay. okay though. Take two. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Coming. We are here with Emily Petroff and thank you for telling me how to pronounce it correctly. Absolutely. So awesome. Well, and thank you everybody for coming and joining us. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about authenticity and transparency, which I feel like is kind of a hip thing to talk about, but I, I'm excited to really kind of bring it into how to, how functionally it fits in with how not only we live, but also how we can work. And specifically speaking to entrepreneurs, I think it's a really good foundation. So, um, now I am going to uh, be visiting with Emily and kind of hogging her for a little bit and then we will be opening it up for questions. So I'm going to just a little bit about Emily. She has spent 10 plus years working in a variety of industries. Um, she's the president of Evolve. Uh, she has di direct oversight of operations which encompasses coaching both personal and professional relationships. Uh, Emily's focus on relationships, trust and rapport in a highly emotional field has allowed her to utilize her strengths to help leaders find their one thing, implement rapid change, and improve relationships, relationship engagement. Emily has shared her success through numerous public speaking events, both locally, here in Billings, and nationally, and probably in Montana yep. as well, mm -hmm. uh, statewide. So Emily is featured in the number one international best-selling book, Ready, Aim, Thrive, and she has been inducted into the best-selling Authors International Organization. Very well done. Uh, Ms. Petroff's experience and educational background includes strategic decision-making and planning, organizational communication, change management, employee and leadership development, team building, and relationship con relationship conflict resolution. There's always one, when I do my introductions, there's always like one piece where I'm like, blah, 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 I can't Well, speak. and it's a crazy so, mouthful. <laughs> Stuff. So I, I just want to make sure to share all this with you because I think it's really exciting. It's really diverse. So um, she's no stranger to the pitfalls of life, relationships, parenting, and self-confidence. So her dedication to her own ongoing personal growth and development is a testament to her success and the success of her clients. Emily, thank you so much and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. How about if, um, I know I feel like I just told everybody everything about you, <laughs> but I'm sure I haven't. So no. how about if you just share a little bit about yourself? Sure, absolutely. So um, I'm a Billings girl born and raised and um, I am sort of a serial entrepreneur. So I'm a fifth generation entrepreneur and I've owned gosh, um, 13 businesses in different industries. And um, I can remember being about 12 years old and really, really understanding like on a granular level, the trials and tribulations that entrepreneurs experience, right? The things that we cry about at night, the things that we, you know, get up and celebrate. And so I think that really is where um, it started for me is, is at a very, very young age. And so I was surrounded by people who own their own business and, and I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs because I think that not everyone has that experience. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of folks, they're scared to start or there's a lot of, and for me, I had no other, like there was almost no other option, right? It was like, right. why would you do anything other than start your own business? It's right? like your, your normal was set. Like. Yes. Yes. So, um, so that kind of, for me was how I got things started was just knowing that like, that's what you do and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, so my challenge was that I started a lot of businesses and um, loved pieces of them, but not the whole thing. And um, so I went through this process of really working on myself and having a lot of amazing mentors. And um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the transparency and the authenticity that I was able to gain through those experiences. Um, but it helped me... Um, 
manifest Mm. the business that I have now that I really am extremely passionate about and um, that I love doing every day. Um, Now I spend, for the last two years, I've been coaching uh, really as my soul. I have have some other businesses still, but really my main focus is my coaching business. So I've been coaching for about the last six years um, in a variety of industries. For the last two years, I spend a lot of time in the real estate industry. So I I would say about 70% of my clients are um, female real estate agents uh, across the country. So oh, yeah, so that's nice. kind of what I'm doing right now. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, and like I kind of mentioned earlier, it feels like, um, I feel like there are some kind of catchphrases that we hear when, um, especially if someone either isn't as immersed in uh, acting on their entrepreneurialistic, you know, passion, like they're like, I want to start my own business. Um, and then they hear these things and it's like, yeah, that sounds really great. Sounds really like frou-frou or, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like something real mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. So can you just share a little bit about what that even means uh, to be transparent or authentic? Yeah, um, absolutely. So for me, I think that transparency comes from leadership, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, or it, for entrepreneurs, when I speak about transparency, um, and I think it can exist in all spaces, but where I mostly speak about it is when you have people that you know you're collaborating with that are working with you, whether they're on your team or whether they're vendors or you know as a leader. I grew up watching, and both of my parents, who I love, and they've been very, they've done very well for themselves. They're very successful. They've owned businesses in our community for over thirty years, and I think they think they or they thought they needed to have it all figured out all the time Mm -hmm. and um when I watched them have all the answers or think they have all the answers Mm -hmm. I operated that way for a very long time inside of my businesses and um who knows it all right Right. like who is that person like I I, nobody is in alignment with the the guy or the gal who says like I'm great I've always been great and I'm always going to be great like I wasn't in alignment with that person so it was like I had to really get real with myself and look in the mirror and go like you don't have it all freaking figured out like let's not let's let's be real about that so I think it was getting comfortable with myself and letting letting and being okay with the insecurities that I had not being afraid to say like I don't know the answer to that Mm -hmm. and I have great resources around me let me go find out um and so I think that for my parents generation especially um they went around operating as if they had to have it all figured out. Sure. And so that was something for me that was really important. And I think that sometimes leaders, I just spoke with a client yesterday and we were talking about this idea of transparency and how, you know, I said she wanted to level up her accountability in regard to some things. And like the time that she shows up to the office, we you know real estate agents sometimes aren't the best about getting to the office <laughs> at a certain time. And so she wanted to level up. And I said, I think that you should talk to your team about that. Mm -hmm. Right. I think you should have a conversation with your team about like, okay, guys, my commitment to you is that I'm going to be here at X time. She was like, I don't think I can do that. And I'm like, no, you can. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it doesn't have you don't have to have it all figured out. And it's okay for you to share the things that you're working on with them. That makes them. I think it makes them even more engaged and more enrolled in what it is that you're trying to get them to do, right? And then it's this wonderful partnership of you holding them accountable and or them holding you accountable. So I speak about transparency in regard to leadership. And then I think leadership applies in all areas of our life, right? right? We're leading our children. Or ourselves. You know, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of my take mm-hmm. on transparency and being okay not having it all figured out. Well, and you know, when we first started talking about discussing this on here on the Mastermind Session, at first I was thinking it has a lot to do with um, you, you need a lot of vulnerability to allow that. And, and, I, and at first I was thinking it has a lot to do with like, like what you were saying, where you know you have to show up, you have to kind of have all your crap put together. But also I feel like it, it has to do with being allowing yourself to make mistakes mm-hmm. and be clear about it. Cause, and it kind of dawned on me when you were telling that story because you think about it, as soon as we're vulnerable and we tell people like, look, I have this weakness, I would like you to know it, and I would like you to know that I'm trying to improve it. Well, guess what? You're probably going to screw up. Like, Mm -hmm. you're probably not. So there's that vulnerability, like, I'm going to look bad at some point, and they're going to know it. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, like... You showed up, and I'm already thinking, like, okay, so, Taylor, you're listening. I need to make sure that I know how to pronounce someone's name before they come up, right? So it's, like, all this learning opportunity, and we're leaving ourselves open to these vulnerabilities, but we have – 
it, it also allows other people to come into our world and go, wow, you're vulnerable with me. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, th- don't you think that makes bonds closer? I mean, absolutely, yes. And I think it gives, we all have those, yeah. right? There's not one person, and I very rarely make gross generalizations, but yeah. I really don't think, there's not one person that doesn't have some kind of insecurity or some kind of vulnerability that they hold close and Mm -hmm. and in here and so when we're we have the courage to share the things that we're working on or the things that you know maybe we're not the biggest fan of Mm -hmm. um it encourages and gives other people the courage to do the same thing and so it does build that really close bond and how do you grow without it absolutely really absolutely so what just to kind of expand on that what do you think are some of the advantages of bringing in this type of vulnerability or willingness to be transparent and authentic and really show who we really are? Um, Probably the biggest one is that when you don't operate in that way, it's exhausting. Right. So when I talk to a client or anyone for that matter, and I hear like, I'm so exhausted, like I'm tired. Um, My experience has been that it's because when I wasn't living my life authentically and I had to put on this face or this mask or be this certain kind of way, like it's exhausting Mm -hmm. to be that. It's not a long-term sustainable plan for your life or your business. And so I think the greatest benefit is that you get to attract the people that love you for you the Mm -hmm. way you are and you get to be okay with um, repelling. I had a coach who once said to me, um, if you're not repelling as many people as you attract, you're not doing it right. And I was like, Oh God, I love that. Right. You just blew so, my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Oh my gosh, I want to embrace that. And for the longest time I lived my life sort of watering myself down, trying to be, you know, like, Oh, it's okay. I want, you know, this person to, to mm-hmm. resonate with me and this person to resonate with me. But the reality of it is, is that there are a ton of people out there who are not going to like me Mm -hmm. because probably some people that listen to this are going to go, well, who the hell is this woman, (laughs) right? And I'm okay with that, right? Because then they're not my people and that's perfectly fine. There's someone out there that can serve them in a really magical way. Like, I don't have to serve every person. And I didn't didn't grow up getting that programming, right? That Mm -hmm. was work that I had to do. So I think that for me, you get to live, like, I'm doing more in my life right now because... I'm not exhausted because I get to show up as myself all the time. I get to, you know, just be me. So I don't have to, you know, put on this face or this dance or this song that like I have to remember or I have to like, Mm -hmm. I'm not exhausted by it, which means we can take on more stuff and we can handle more things. People in my life are very forgiving because if I make a mistake, I've already told them that that might happen, right? Like all of those (laughs) things. So you get to grow your universe and expand it exponentially because of that vulnerability and that, that authenticity. Well, and I think one thing too, that's empowering um, in lines with what you're saying is allowing that you don't work with everybody. Yep. You know, um, if you're forcing this relationship that isn't working besides, even if you're being authentic and transparent and you, allow, you know, like you, I feel like we're um, indulging ourselves to feel sorry for ourselves when someone doesn't like us. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I fall into it. I think, you know, again, at risk of overgeneralizing, I do think everybody wants to be loved. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I can, oh, yeah, I think I can without, exception say that and so when we when someone when we perceive that someone doesn't like us especially when we're like hey I'm just laying myself out there um but uh, but kind of training yourself to have a coping thing to say that's all right Mm -hmm. um and then end it you're gonna get over it in Mm -hmm. like two weeks (laughs) you know like there's gonna come a moment where you're like oh I didn't even remember that person Mm -hmm. didn't like me Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um and so I think even that beyond is a little more freeing absolutely and I think like just to give kind of a a, an additional layer to that one of the things like I will ask people is do you expect everyone to like you Mm -hmm. and most of the I mean our answer is like no because we know logically that that's not realistic right right? like that's not that's not going to happen and yet we operate like if you're disappointed that somebody doesn't particularly care for you and you're disappointed by that, there is an expectation in you that they do, right? Or right. you want to know, like, I can remember wanting to know, like, well, why right. don't they, right? What's like, what did me? I write? <laughs> What's wrong with it me? It doesn't have to right. mean, like, and, and when I walk into a room, right, there's going to be a portion of people that I go, oh, my gosh, I love these people. And then a portion of people that I'm just like, eh. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so they feel that way about me too. So if I want to have that, right, Mm -hmm. I want to give that also to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we have expectations that we want other people to do, but that we're also then not willing to reciprocate. And so Mm -hmm. I think that that for me was a big like, Yes, I can really embrace that. Yeah. You know? Well, and I just want to kind of frame what we're talking about a little bit here. Um, I know this is really, uh, Chat and Grow is really meant for uh, businesses, uh, for marketing professionals, for entrepreneurs to get out there and kill it, to grow, to whether it's online or whatever way, but to I'm just hyper-focused on business, business growth. And so when um, I, when Emily and I were talking about having her come and talk about this, I feel like it's so valuable because anyone who's listened to multiple podcasts of, of this Chat and Grow uh, Marketing Mastermind series, you will hear over and over again about talking to your audience, about knowing your brand, about being consistent. And unless you know who you are and, and unless you have defined how you're going to operate if what you're hearing right now about this whole like well whatever I need you know my brand is that I know everything um it you're probably going to want to stop listening because that's not what we're <laughs> gonna, like I don't even know how to I don't even know how to coach that so you, I don't even know if this podcast is probably for you because um a hundred percent if you know who you are and you're willing to be consistent you can't be consistent unless you're telling the truth and so I feel like, you know, authenticity, I feel, is like a fancy word for just telling the truth. Absolutely. You know, I feel like mm-hmm. integrity, authenticity, transparency, if you do the right, the right thing always wins. Mm-hmm. Like, if you do the right thing, it always wins. If you tell the truth, uh, you don't have anything to keep track of. And we all know that. We were taught that in kindergarten. But it is, I feel, more important than ever if you want your business to grow. If you want to struggle and you want to hate your business, you want to hate Mondays, <laughs> Um, then, you know, disregard everything we're about to say. But um, but I just wanted to frame that a little mm-hmm. bit in the context like this, what we're talking about has everything to do with the other subjects that we cover um, each and every re- week. So, yeah, um, yeah. so, okay, um, let's see here. So we just talked about some of the advantages. What are some disadvantages? Like, can you think of any, I mean, there's got to be, because there's always yeah. two sides of every coin. Yeah. So maybe what are some pitfalls or something mm-hmm. that you can see or traps that yeah. people might fall into when it comes to this? Um, so I'm sure you're familiar with, because I know that you're a huge uh, learner and you're passionate about personal growth and development, but Brene Brown, uh, oh, you're familiar with. Yeah. Yeah, Brene yeah. Brown. Um, one of the things, and I can't remember which, I want to say it was Daring Greatly that she wrote this in, but it always stood out to me um, that sometimes our, and it was about being vulnerable and, and that whole idea of, of vulnerability and how wonderful it is, but she said that vulnerability and transparency, um, we have to look at it as um, like lighting, right? And so she said, If we are so vulnerable and so transparent with somebody, the second that we meet them, it's like it's like being completely in the dark and then having floodlights like on you. Right. You you can't even see because it's blinding. Mm. And so I think one thing that, you know, when people begin to practice vulnerability that you have to be careful of is that you don't just, you know, I wouldn't meet you, Tiffany, on the street and then just say like, hey, so here's all the problems that I have or here's all the things that are going on with me. Right. Like we it's it's about having a dimmer switch. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, and so it's not about hiding. Right. It's Mm -hmm. not. But it's about like you have to really like decide what the connection is that you're having with this person. And I the second that I met you, like we, this is now our fourth or fifth time, I think, that we've maybe connected or third time, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every time that I meet you, we have even more depth to our conversation. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like, I feel great about sharing things with you, but I wouldn't have shared those things with you upon our first meeting because that's that's not how we communicate, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that one thing that, stood out for me that she said was always that right it's about a dimmer switch and how you don't just flood people with your stuff right and and you don't just shout out these are my insecurities from the rooftops right Right. although you're okay and I'm comfortable with them right and if you asked me I would do that but I'm not gonna just automatically share that so I think that's one thing the other thing is that um, you have to let go of or be okay with the like I told you so person Mm -hmm. or the person who's not doing the work that like you're doing Mm -hmm. because it would be very easy for me to share um, something that I'm you know struggling with or that I'm insecure about and then have that person like have the perception of like rejection or that they are better than you right Mm -hmm. so there are people out there who are not working on themselves and who are not okay being transparent and vulnerable so what right Right. that's the thing that I say but people often like 
look at vulnerability as a like oh someone could take advantage of me mm-hmm. no like you're weakness. only allowing like we all we allow people to do things to us or not do they're not doing anything to me so if i have a reaction if i share something with you and you go oh that's terrible and i'm like <laughs> um i choose that reaction mm-hmm. right but but i also could have a different reaction to that i could say oh well it's interesting that you have that perspective to me <laughs> right like i don't have to take on your stuff right. or your negative reaction to my insecurities like i have to get comfortable being uncomfortable with the stuff that i'm working on so i think that's the other thing that people really have to like you're not going to be comfortable with your insecurities go out there and everybody love them up right yeah. like that's just not people aren't working on themselves yeah. you'll recognize like the people that are working on themselves because they go oh my gosh i totally get that yeah. right and although that might not be a thing for them they have other stuff and they're willing to you know reciprocate that and you can grow together and yeah, yeah form yeah. this great relationship so those would be the things that i would say you know to sort of watch out for or think about as you're working on being more transparent more authentic and maybe not let it discourage you absolutely yeah. find your tribe right mm-hmm. find the people that go we don't care about that yeah. or love that you're working on that or i once had that same issue you know yeah. that kind of thing well and it goes back to one thing that i say a lot is be careful who you take your advice from mm-hmm. like be careful who you listen to yes. that's what i say and if they're where you want to be and they got there in a way that's uh consistent with your own system um like i listen to those if they're there i'm like whoa talk to me like i have i and if they're going hey just maybe don't share like don't overshare absolutely <laughs> you know? or if they say if they have something to say then i'm in mm-hmm. even if i put myself out and i'm vulnerable and then they have something to say I'm maybe not as defensive either. Absolutely. I'm maybe not going, oh, you hurt my feelings. I'm maybe just going, oh, you know, good feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, however, if it's someone that's kind of like, you know, it's a little bit like, all right, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Our environment. Nice day. <laughs> absolutely. The people that we surround ourselves with, um, I'm sure you've also heard this before, but the, the five people that we spend the most time with, we're an exact division of those people, mm-hmm. like emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically, right, mentally, all of those things. So you have to be very, very careful where you're spending your time and who you're spending it with. And it's interesting because I didn't always have that. I didn't know that either, right? Mm-hmm. And so I would, give, around. Yeah, yeah. I would give anyone my time. I wasn't yeah. guarded with that. And um, some people, you know, are like, oh, you, you, you don't just say yes to everyone. I don't because yeah. I sometimes don't want their bad juju in my space, right? <laughs> like I really want to protect that. I've worked hard for it. And so yeah. now like you got to be a rocking person or on this path to really be, to get some of my time because yeah. that's important to me. And so I think that when I was in a space of not honoring myself and when I didn't have confidence and when I was living this lie, I would let anybody in because those people would often tell me how great I was or how this, and I was using it as a way to fill myself up because I wasn't filling myself up, right? And so now I fill myself up. I don't need to to get that validation from those people. I can actually collaborate with somebody else instead of needing that validation. So I think that's Well, good. and the cool thing I think about surrounding yourself with the people that you want to be like and being really cognizant of of that fact that you will become them if you're around them that they have those habits that you want to have Mm -hmm. and so it becomes not so much like I need to learn how to not take this in it's just becomes a culture Mm -hmm. like well you know I appreciate that other people do things differently I appreciate that they have a different opinion but you're around all these other people too that they're like well why would you take that inside? You know, that's, you know, absolutely. Um, yes. There's a way to listen, but um, you know, cause especially as a business owner, you have to really listen to what your customers say. You have to really listen to what your clients say. However, they don't have to tell you how to do business. Mm-hmm. You know, you still have to put it through a filter and, um, and things like that. So I think it's really parallel to kind of what we're talking about. Yeah, but. absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I have lots more questions for you, but anyone out there who is listening right now live, uh, be sure to post your comments uh, or comment with your questions if you're on Facebook Live or if you're in the Zoom chat room, please post them in the chat. So uh, let's see here. So um, let's see. So how have, oh, this is a good one. Okay, so how have you, can you give some examples of people using transparency well where you've seen maybe an example or two of like, wow, this was a little bit off and then they implemented mm-hmm. this new way of doing it and, and give us an example or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so two different examples. Um, one is a gal who is a real estate agent in Texas and um, had a team 
she very much has had the perspective of like she was she's a, a high D or a driver personality, right? So she comes in in the morning, she wants to get right to work. She was not really investing in her people. Um, they didn't know a lot about her personally. She wasn't sharing that. It was like in order to be their boss and hold them accountable, like I have to keep this this wall there, right? And I am a firm believer that that is not true, that you do not have to have that. It, you only have to have that if you're not willing to have hard conversations with people mm-hmm. and honest conversations with people, right? So we really worked on on how she could invest in her people through being more transparent and saying to them, like, I don't know all the answers and here are the things that I'm struggling with inside of the business. And three of her people had, like, amazing solutions, Aww. but she had never asked them for it. They, they had never been tapped so sometimes we have these amazing resources around us, but because we're holding in our things, we aren't getting those solutions or they're not coming to the surface because we're not open to it. Um, it dramatically shifted her business. Like inside of six or eight months, I think, um, they had a 50% increase in their profitability. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it was a huge, huge... Besides probably the experience was better. Oh. So like quality of life increase, and then to have numbers go up like that is incredible. Yeah, I mean, they, um, her people were like, we liked you before, but we love you now. <laughs> Oh, right yeah. and she was like oh my gosh I had no idea that I could be like this like they're mm-hmm. my friends now Aww. and I'm not afraid like I can hold them more accountable because of our friendship mm-hmm. not like be- I can't because now we're friends and you're going to take advantage of me right. you know like which is a, a common myth in terms of, of accountability conversations and well that. and don't you think like a lot of people use this word team mm-hmm. but it's really not a team until that kind of a door is open mm-hmm. because I always feel like, I mean, my staff always knows. They, I mean, they, they could tell anybody what my weaknesses are because I tell them all the time. <laughs> and um, and then I and then I'm also able to share with them like, okay, let's improve this. And and they know like we're all on the same team. We're mm-hmm. like, I want to get better, and they're like, well, we want to get better. Mm-hmm. And so it it truly is like, you know, if I was playing basketball and I was trying to pass it to someone every time, but they had run up a little bit too far, what would we do? We would talk yeah. about it. And then if they said, well, you need to throw it harder. And I'd be like, okay, good. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like business is the same way. And yeah. I, I love the fact that there's, you know, we can quantify yeah, your absolutely. example too. That's awesome. Yeah. So the other one is a pet industry. So I grew up in the pet industry. My oh, mom okay. owned businesses in the pet industry when I was growing up and I owned four businesses in the pet industry. My sister still owns a business in the pet industry. So I know a fair amount about the pet industry. And, um, so I had this client, um, this was several years ago, but probably like two and a half. Um, and she was in Virginia and, um, she was saying yes to everyone, right? Mm-hmm. Like really trying to, she had no no unique positioning, right? No, um, th- there really wasn't a lot of marketing going on for her. And um, she had a lot of like uh, large variety of clients, right? She mm-hmm. wasn't really specializing in any one thing. Um, and so, but she had, these people were constantly complaining about this particular service or that particular service. And so she was really frustrated, exhausted, right? Mm -hmm. Like ready to like, should I sell the business? Like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I just can't keep going like this. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up doing is like looking at her current database and like looking at the demographics, looking at like, who are they comprised of? Like, who are you serving? And then who do you love to serve? And not like, and it's a scary conversation to think about like, saying no to these people because they're revenue and as small business owners we need that revenue we'll do anything for a right. dollar right who's your target everyone 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 yes i can if do they don't anything. have a pet they should have a yes, pet <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and so we really looked and it was one of the hardest decisions she said that she ever had to make but it was like we recognized that she was loving these people mm-hmm. and so not that she didn't still serve these people right. but we really went after these people like she called them and she asked them questions and she got really clear about why they loved to working with her, what it was that they loved about her, um, and how she could continue to please them. And then she designed all of her, she, her website was designed around mm. that, you know, all of her, um, she was doing radio at the time, all of her radio marketing campaigns, you know, all of her, she wasn't really doing a whole lot of online stuff, but um, she was able to get uh, a more, less time that she was exhausted and more time that she was really clear about and less people that were pissed off about yeah. what they were getting from her, right? And it was like, she she called me one day and she said, I, I had to fire a customer today. Mm. And I said, okay, let's talk about it, right? And she First said, of all, good job. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, Yay! <tell> more. <laughs> yes. 
she said uh, this gal came in and she was complaining and she goes, I looked back on her file and she had a complaint the last six times that she had been in. Uh, and she goes, it wasn't big things. It was just little things here and there. Mm -hmm. And so she goes, I did what you said. And I had this, these series of questions. And she goes, I finally just said to her, like, do you feel like we can give you what you need? And the lady was like, well, I don't know. Every time there's something wrong. And she said, you know what? There's this wonderful woman and her name is whatever it was. And she's like about six miles down the road. I think she could totally serve you better than I can serve you. And she goes, the woman was just furious. Like she was just like, what? You don't want my business? And she goes, no, I want you to be happy. And what we're doing for you is not, you're not happy. Right. So anyway, the woman went somewhere else and she was like, it was so hard for me, but one of the, and she goes, it just How gave me this though. confidence yeah. <laughs> to just be like, okay. And I said, for, for every one person that you're wasting all of this energy mm -hmm. and time on, that could mean five new people coming in the door that just are like easy to serve mm -hmm. and not because they're easy clients, but because you, what you do it for fits. them, they love. Yeah. yeah. So that for me is about where the authenticity comes from and yeah. not being exhausted to run your business, you know, because well, you're saying yes to everyone. Well, when you think about it, I mean, someone like that where it's not quite fitting, it's obviously not a good fit and and all that effort that is focused on that person that isn't a good fit it really takes you away from these wonderful customers where you know just by the way that you're doing business is a good fit for mm -hmm. them and they're happier and you're able to give them more good energy yeah. and yeah that's Absolutely. awesome that's yeah. a very good example yeah. so um so how okay this is um I think we talked a little bit about how we've seen it backfire. Do you have any examples of times that you've seen people kind of step out and then you're like, ooh, maybe a learning experience of like, okay, so, you know, don't do it this way <laughs> or, yeah. or maybe tweak it a little bit. Or... Um, maybe not quite exactly like that, but I'll share a personal experience. Okay. Um, so, um, gosh, it was about seven, eight years ago, I um, – was working in a radio station. I was a general sales manager for a group of radio stations. And um, we had uh, this client that was coming to record a spot and to do some work with us. And I remember this guy specifically because we, well, because Billings is a small town anyway, mm -hmm. and you know, what his, his business was that he was in. And we just had this like, you know, organic conversation and it was all like just light and whatever, right? But I, I, I always remembered that guy. So I haven't seen him for, gosh, probably that same amount of time. Like I haven't seen him for years and years and years. And I went to a networking event. This is probably about six or eight months ago. And he happened to be there. And I was like, oh, hey, how are you? And, you know, we started connecting. And so we, um, uh, everyone at the networking event was sharing and we were going around the table and we had this really great discussion. And after the meeting, he said, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? And I was like, sure, yeah, well, that's fine. And he was like, well, no, like, away from everyone. And I was like, okay, <laughs> sure, absolutely. And he goes, I just want to tell you that, you know, when my boss and I did business with you when you were at the radio station? And I said, yeah. And he goes, we were like, walked out of there and we're like, whoa, like, that girl is something else. Um, and he goes, and I see you now. And I've watched you on LinkedIn and, like, we've been Facebook friends and whatever. And he goes, you really have changed so much mm -hmm. and you really like talk your talk, walk your walk. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it was a great compliment, but I also was like, I didn't really know that it was that bad at that time, right? Like you, like I knew it was bad, I but to have all those emotions just now for you, I was like, oh, that's so nice. Wait. Oh, right. It, so, so it was rude. really what, what interesting to be able to have that. And I mean, he was, it was coming from, right. you know, his heart. And I was really proud of him to have the courage to say that to me because yeah. I think if people notice that, sometimes they don't say yeah. that, right? Or they might say the like, gosh, you've grown so much. Good, good for you. <laughs> but it was really wonderful to, to have in that moment the perspective that he had seven years ago or whatever it was and to recognize like, like, I say all the time, like I was, you know, diarrhea of the mouth on people or I was this or that, <laughs> yeah. but to really have someone experience it and then tell you that and oh. then see the growth was really like bittersweet and lovely. So that was a, an interesting experience <laughs> in terms of my own authenticity and just somebody, you know, that has watched me. They're watching us on social media, <laughs> right? Okay. They're yeah. seeing it. Um, and I think sometimes people wonder, you know, if it's real. Yeah. Right. What we see online um, looks great. Sounds great. We're attracted to that person. We're following them. Mm -hmm. But if you meet them, 
do they match that? And so I was really grateful that he had that experience with me and then could also track it back to not yeah. such a great experience with me. Well, and I think, um, I think a really, I think the nugget there is, um, it's really great that you're able to not be defensive, mm-hmm. you know? So like you had this moment with this person and I think as business owners, especially when we love what we do and our business is our baby, it's really easy to fall. Again, I feel like it's an indulgence. I don't think that it's something that we have to do. I think it's an indulgence. Mm -hmm. And if we can kind of break out of that, it's just so empowering because you were able to hear what that person had to say. Um, you, You know, and you really took in like, wow. So there was a moment where I was screwing up. But or not, but he basically saw a progression and the way that, you know, you, your perspective on it. I think our perspective is everything. If we're able to take it and go, because probably I'm guessing like if it were me, I'd feel like, okay, so more of that, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, even if right now I feel like I'm doing okay. So if in 10 years someone looks back and goes, wow, you've really improved. I need to take that as a compliment. Absolutely. Not like, wow, I sucked 10 years ago. Right. It needs to be like, how do we process that? And and I think that really goes back to this entire um, bowl of on- mm-hmm. authenticity and transparency because, again, it goes back to vulnerability. But then taking the vulnerability, um, what do we do with what happens after? Yeah. You know, So if someone has input, how do we process it? And then what do we do with it next? Yeah. So The other thing that I think is really important, um, and I have to remind myself of this, like especially in that type of a um, conversation, is that most of the time... I think people in general, and myself included, I didn't know that I was being inauthentic. Do you know what I mean? Like, when when I say, like, I had to look in the mirror and get really clear, like, I was lying to myself about a lot of things. Like, it was a lack of self-awareness. Mm. It was a lack of consciousness. It was, a, it was a lack of those things. So the more that I worked on myself, the more clear I got about how self-aware I was, the more clear I got about my, my consciousness around lots of different areas. So when people are, and this is the, like, I give people as many free passes as I can because I think that they're not doing it intentionally most right. of the time, right? They're just, they don't know, mm-hmm. right? We don't know what we don't know. Yeah. And at that time in my life, like, I didn't know what I didn't know. Like, mm-hmm. I was operating in this space where now I look back and go, ugh. Um, but I'm also, like, at some point, 10 mm-hmm. years from now, I hope to have another one of those experiences. Yeah. But right now, I'm operating in the authenticity and the realness that I, the capacity that I have for that. And I want to grow and grow and grow that capacity. So maybe there's an even more deeper, greater, higher, whatever level of that for me. So I think that we have to be careful about the judgments that we put on other people. Yeah. Like, oh, they're playing, putting on an act. They don't know that they're putting on an right. act a lot of times, right? Like, I didn't know that until I went through work and I had coaches and I had all of these things. People go, mm, is that really true for you? And I'm like... Oh, could that not be true for me? Like, holy cow. Yeah. So I think that's important, too, to recognize, like, let yourself off the hook a little bit mm-hmm. and, and let, let other, other people, people off the yeah. hook. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, do you think that there's, um, you know, as as an entrepreneur, there's a progression just in the phases. So, like, if you're stepping out and, and if you're listening right now, or you are obviously listening right now, um, you know, you could be in a spot where you're like, okay, I work for someone else. I'm thinking about stepping out. That's really scary. And you're kind of... If once you actually do it, people are judging you like you're crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're doing it, and the people are looking at you going, oh, you've tried 400 things and failed, so this is, there they go again, you know? Mm-hmm. So I feel like as an entrepreneur, you know, they make fun of you, and then as you start to get successful, then they kind of um, beat up on you a little yeah. bit. Like, mm-hmm. wow, they're, look at how they did it. And blah, I mean, mm-hmm. so you're constantly in these different phases and then when you get into the, and, and as far as like what you're talking about, like, am I being real with myself in those different spots? It's tempting in different ways to put on a different kind of a show. You yeah. Know? But then when you get successful, people are listening to you and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, wow. So yeah. what do you have to say? And I feel like there are traps in every phase of it that is different. So I think even with what you're talking about, a business owner or an entrepreneur could be running into traps all along the way. So where we're talking about in 10 years, where, you know, if people are looking back and they're like, oh, I mean, they could be going, remember Tiffany's podcast and like they had nothing on the wall and the brick wall and it was really right. boring. And wow, mm-hmm. look at you now. I mean, I just feel like what I, what I'm saying right now, I could be looking back and going, well, you know, I could see, I could see vulnerabilities where I'm responding to how people are judging me now and then later when people are listening to you there's a i mean you have to have a little bit of arrogance to be 
a successful business person. Sure. I mean, hopefully not arrogance. What's another better way? Confidence. Yeah. Um, and so managing that as it relates to transparency, I just feel like it's a different approach yeah. in the different phases. So I think that the one ticket for me in that is that the judgments come because of their definition of success, mm-hmm. right? So, or the traps. So if my definition of success is not in alignment with your definition of success or their definition of success, it won't like be careful not to to wrap up what they think of you mm-hmm. because maybe what they define as success is not what's important to you, right? right? So it's they're going to have judgment no matter what. Like if you reach your pinnacle and they don't look at that as success, like there's never going to be them going like, oh, good job, you yeah. know? Like so I think you have to be careful about letting other people define success for you, mm-hmm. right? Like be very clear about what that success looks like so that you're not living by somebody else's or on someone else's terms mm-hmm. and then the traps are a little bit easier. The other thing that I always tell people as an entrepreneur is that your family a lot of times are not or your friends are not going to be your biggest supporters right. because they love you right and that sounds so weird to say but um they want to keep you from being in pain and being an entrepreneur is like what well, I think That's it was painful. Elon Musk that said like it's like eating shards of glass and like yeah. going into the abyss or something I mean it's like yes that's exactly how it feels some days it's just it's crappy and it's hard and it's painful and the people that love you go why would you want to do this when you could just go get a real job and um, have benefits and time off and, you know, you don't have to stay up all night and, you know, all of that. And so they love you. Like our society is programmed not to feel pain. Right. Right. Like, right. and growth is painful. Like right. that's the, you don't, you're not no. growing if you're like, woohoo, you yeah. know, so I think there's got to be a portion of that. So if you're wanting like to start a side hustle or if you're wanting to step out on your own, you have to have to have to have a community like this. Mm-hmm. and or people that are close to you that get it right. and don't share that garbage and this is not about not being authentic right this is about protecting um the things that protecting your dreams protecting the pieces that you need because when you're in that space of your idea is vulnerable mm-hmm. and somebody comes in and goes that's a terrible idea <laughs> um it's hard to not like let the self-doubt creep in and then go oh they're probably right right no you need to have a community of other entrepreneurs that go Hell, that does, they don't know. So what? Right? Yeah. Like, do you know how many times I failed? Like, yeah. how many times this happened? Like, no, it's okay. And you go, oh, okay. You know, so you have to have a community of people that get it to support you. And most of the time, it's not the people that are close to you. Those people are going to inhibit your growth, not push you to grow. Right. Well, there a couple things come to mind. One is that just this morning I was listening to a podcast and it was like someone asked um, the person be- being interviewed, they said, so how do you handle risk? Like, how do you handle your feelings about risk? And, and, and you know, are you okay? how do you deal with it? Because obviously there's risk in starting businesses and, and owning businesses and running them for any length of time. And he was like, you know, asking an entrepreneur how they deal with risk is like saying, hey, how do you like oxygen? You know, I mean, it's basically <laughs> like, I don't even know how to answer that. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's just part of what you do, right. you know, and, and you just have to take it in and cope with it. And the other thing is, you know, uh, my husband and I, you know, we've we've had multiple businesses and we've had very successful businesses and we've had things that have failed miserable, miserably. And we've had people involved on both sides. So yeah. we've had people where we got hurt and they got hurt. Right. And we've got people where we succeeded and they succeeded, right. you know. So um, there's a lot of people in our world that have felt both sides of it. And so I, I respect that. Um, and, but as we built, um, you know, when we first started going out and doing things and getting brave about it, one phrase always stuck in our head um, was what what other people think is none of my business. Yes. And, you know, we hear it all the time, yes. but literally it was like a mantra. Like I had and then we went to church and um, one of my main leadership mentors was our pastor. Like we were very good friends with them. And I, I just I have I've always had so much respect for him. And and I remember sitting and and he's one of those, like, if he says it, I'm hearing it, like, you know, because I get he he's very pastorpreneurial. He makes up all these words, you know. (laughs) And so so he gets this whole entrepreneurial spirit and he said something. um, And I don't know who has said this whole it's none of my business, what people think. I know we had sent it to him at one point, but he said in this sermon, he was like, you know, that might be true. However, it does matter. So there is a balance. Like, there is a balance. Like, we do have to take in, even if it's people who love us. But I feel like um, at the end of the day, 
um, like you were saying, you have to balance, you have to think, you have to filter it. Mm -hmm. I think that the filter is the most important thing. Like, thank you. If we can hear it, like, okay, they love me. It's the whole risk is my oxygen and they don't like risk. Mm -hmm. Like you go into a doctor, if you have pain, they'll give you drugs to make you sick, Mm -hmm. to get rid of the pain. Like they do not want you to have pain. And that's the culture that we live in. And so if we can, um, because we do want to love people, like to me, loving people is always like that always wins. Mm -hmm. So if we can find a way to filter it so it doesn't destroy us, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that that that's good. Um, And and I liked what you said about, um, you know, being careful what we share, Mm -hmm. because if we're about to share something with with someone that we love and we know that they're going to perceive it like, oh, my gosh, you are going to jump off a bridge right now, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, maybe don't. Maybe yeah. I'll share. And, yeah. and I think that goes back, too, to peeling back the onion. I mean, it, sometimes your family members don't like onions. Yes. And so they, you should give them an apple. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, and you can give them everything right to the core. Right. But leave your onion yeah. over on the side yeah. on the cutting board. <laughs> I was listening to an NPR. Uh, I think it's called How It Was Built, How This Was Built, something like that. But it was uh, Sarah Blakely. Okay. Um, she's the founder, creator of Spanx. Oh, yes. And yes. Um, oh, if you have not listened to that, listen to it. It's fabulous. But she said she, for a year, did not tell her husband about the idea, right? Because didn't tell anyone except for, like, the manufacturing people and all the, yeah. like... Because she said, if I had told anyone about the night that I cut the legs out of my pantyhose, like it would have never went anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was like such a crazy idea. And now she's the youngest female billionaire in Mm -hmm. our, and and not that we're all questing after money. It's not Mm -hmm. always about that. And yet like it is sometimes, right? That's the quantifiable proof that it it worked. Right. So (laughs) I think that, (laughs) right, absolutely. So I think you have to hold that close so that, you know, and, and I think the way that I have found that it works for me the filter that you're talking about is start with you first Mm. right trust yourself we doubt ourselves so often um and and so much that we look for that validation outside of ourselves first right start with yourself first trust yourself because no one better than you knows right whether you should continue to pursue this Mm -hmm. or whether it's time to put it on the shelf Mm -hmm. and and once you've made that decision then start getting that outside perspective right but don't go out first then come in I think it makes sense to start in first then go out right Right. so yeah I think that's really good that's a very good um, way to look at it so okay uh let's see we have just a few more minutes, so we'll just take one or two more questions if anyone has them. In the meantime, uh, let's see here. Okay, so think about one entrepreneur or business that you work with. If you were like the boss of them and you could just make them do something, um, can you give an example of that? What would you do? What would it be like? And even if you generalize and said, if I work with businesses, if there was one thing that I could just make them do, this is what it would be. I think it is the inspect what you expect. Hmm. Um, When you have a standard that you put out there for yourself or for your people, um, if you're not going back to follow up or have accountability measures in place, um, it's no, there's no purpose in having that standard in the first place. I heard this great quote. I was in Seattle at a conference last week and this, the gentleman that was leading the conference said, um, standards without consequences are merely suggestions. Hmm. And I was like, Oh, love that. (laughs) And so I think that, you know, it's really, I'm great at like, uh, putting putting a standard out there and having accountability but that made me really like for me personally I'm like I'm leveling up in my life mm-hmm. um and I can think about that even with my children right like standards without consequences are merely suggestions right. um and and I think that for the 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 most part regardless of what level or what stage you are in your business or where you're at in your business if you have a standard make sure that you're ex- you're inspecting what you expect. Like that's where the results truly come from. That's Mm -hmm. where the rubber meets the road. And, um, you know, there are all kinds of people in our lives that can be an accountability partner or that can help us like go back and follow up with that expectation that we had. And so I think that part is really important. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. So hold on real quick. I'm just going to, um, so, Okay. I don't know if we've talked about this enough, but I am a huge foodie. 
Okay. So no, if we're talking about like... high standards, I um, don't even like myself sometimes. Like I love food so much and <laughs> I love good food. Yeah. Um, and I like it, you know, when I go places and they have yeah. high standards. So that's beside the point. Now, so at the end of every time we have discussions, I like to talk about food. Okay. In fact, if you go to some of our staff meetings, sometimes that's what we'll talk about. Okay, so it's great. Like, oh, where'd you eat? What'd you have? Yeah. What's the, and, and I love ingredients and I love creativity with it. Do you, how do you feel about food? Is this like So I have a mixed uh, relationship with food because I at one point was over 330 pounds. Okay. And so I used food as a way to cope with things in my life that I didn't really want to deal with. And okay. so I love food. and. Okay. I have to be careful about that relationship. I have to look at the food for what it is and really love it and enjoy it, not use it to just numb out, right? So okay, those are yeah. things I, yeah, so. You know, okay, this is so off track, but um, we I we had a like a, a health blog for a long time. In fact, we're re- rejuvenating it because I have all these really great recipes for okay. healthy versions of, because I'm such a foodie, and so we'll go eat out at restaurants, and then I'll go home and make gluten-free, dairy-free, um, you know, vegetable yeah. kind of versions of it. So that's so awesome. I, I'm I'm obsessed with like healthy food that tastes amazing. Yeah. So I'm I'm always I'm all about like and we get really healthy food, so it's really expensive. Yeah. And so I always I always say that's the best way to do it because it it's cost prohibitive to eat a lot. Yeah. You know, it's like Absolutely. I can only that's afford great... one of these chocolates. Love that. It is the best chocolate. Like we pay two dollars and fifty cents for two little squares of chocolate yeah. at natural grocers because it like it's magical. Like yeah. I could just die. <laughs> But it's not like I'm going to have a whole bowl full of them because right. they're so expensive. Yeah, so absolutely. And it's the same with anything. People will be like, oh, my gosh, that ingredient is so expensive. I'm like, yeah, so you we only eat, like, this much of it. Right. Have you seen your dinner? You know, I'm just like, <laughs> right. So, so I just, you know, I think good food yeah. can actually help. Right. You know, absolutely. The whole, you know, yes. So there is a way to obsess about food. Yes. And still be moderate That's about the quality and I love the, it. Yeah. So. Cool. Okay, so I digress. Yeah. Um, so what is your favorite ingredient or dish? Hmm. Gosh, that is a really, really hard question. Um, I think that it would have to be um, fresh fish. Like, I love sushi, mm. um, and uh, I love... Um, salmon and so oh and you just were in Seattle yes so I oh had great seafood I mean we had oysters one night oh, yeah. and they were amazing um yeah so we had some I had some really amazing dishes while I was there but I would say like sushi probably is on the top of my list yeah. and um it wasn't always something like my parents are very meat and potato kind of people oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. growing up I didn't have exposure to a lot of different types of things well and so here now, it's really hard to get you know, like you yeah. go to Seattle. I mean, mm-hmm. we're from Northwest Washington. Okay. So in Skagit County, there's Blau's oysters in right. there. I mean, we would have a farmer's tour in October, and Blau was always on there. So yeah. we would go, and they would just pull it out. And yeah. So, so here, I could imagine, like, so where did you find the love of? Of fresh seafood. Um, I just traveling. I mean, yeah. I love to travel, and so when I was at places, I'm I'm the risky entrepreneur, right? So like that also went into my palate, and so I just was willing to try this or try that, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is fabulous! Why have I never had this before? And so I think that, and then also, it's a much better option in terms of my health consciousness than not. Oh, yeah. So That's um, true. Than yeah, the so is it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, is there anything else before we go that you just really want to make sure that we share before we cut out? Um, I think I just want to like extend my gratitude and appreciation to you for what you're doing. I'm so passionate about supporting entrepreneurs that anybody else who's also creating a community for them is like, "Ah, thank you because it's, it's, it's tough out there, right? We, we go out and we get beat up and we get Mm -hmm. knocked down and, um, you get your knees bruised and, and, um, you have to have a place to come where you know that you're getting support and or creative ideas ideas and new yeah. things and so be a constant learner the the only way to succeed is I think is to continue to put yourself out there and to be okay you know not knowing the answer and and being a little bit vulnerable and so I'm grateful that you're oh. supporting people all over the world doing this oh, so well, thanks yeah. for thanks for coming yeah. too I know it's really it's it's really a commitment to yeah. kind of carve out the time so I really I was glad it. to do it and this is my favorite job ever so I, <laughs> when people thank me for I'm like wow <laughs> It's like saying, you know, thank you for eating chocolate. Right. You're welcome. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so anyway, well, and thank you so much for joining us today. The best is yet to come.